Welcome to the Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs Daily War Room Update. Um, Maurice Hirsch joining you on this, the 97th day of the war of Israel against the terrorists in the Gaza Strip. Um, it's the 96th day of the war against the terrorists in Lebanon. Um, and it is also uh, um, somewhere in the 90s of the war that the Houthis decided to declare upon Israel. The common denominator between those three warring factors is obviously Iran, and it's operating its tentacles on every front um, against Israel. Um, more violence starting on the 7th of October, and then developing from there, from that massacre, into the war-like situations and the actual war situations that we're experiencing now. Um, in Gaza uh, uh, today, we saw the continuation of the ground uh, operations of the IDF, continuing to really deepen and consolidate the holding in the northern Gaza Strip and furthering and extending the operations in the south, particularly in Khan Yunus, where the IDF forces also uncovered a 60 uh, uh, meter long uh, uh, tunnel in which it appears and appears clear also um, that some of the hostages who were kidnapped on October 7 um, were held in particularly uh, um, dire situations. Um, and really, uh, un unfortunately, we've carried on seeing um, the firing of sporadic um, rockets and mortars from the Gaza Strip, but very much at a, at a lower level, as we see the, the forces, the IDF forces, really taking a stronger and stronger hold there. Um, Hamas still trying to show that they have that ability to fight, but every day as we go by, um, Hamas takes another blow, um, both to its senior personnel and to its weapons arsenal, as the IDF uncovers, as it did just two days ago, a massive uh, factory for uh, um, creating and, and developing um, long-range weapons that was uh, uh, um, there in Khan Yunus. Um, so that's the update, really, from the Gaza Strip. Um, in Lebanon, in the north, um, the war of attrition has carried on um, with Hezbollah attacking um, Israel and Israel responding um, a number of strikes and substantial strikes in the last uh, uh, 24 hours. Yesterday, we saw the uh, the aerial commander for southern Lebanon um, being uh, um, being uh, targeted and assassinated by um, Israeli forces. And today, we saw additional attacks on uh, um, both the terrorist infrastructure and uh, um, the terrorists themselves. Um, from the side of the Houthis, we saw that massive uh, uh, attack yesterday um, by the Houthis on uh, on the U.S. fleet, and uh, and today, really, the, the the big development just as we were starting um, the briefing is that Iran appears to have seized an oil tanker, an, a U.S. oil tanker, um, in order to uh, uh, um, really fulfill their obligations, as they said, according to a, a decree of law, a, a, a judgment apparently issued in an Iranian court um, to seize uh, um, U.S. assets, what seems to be a tit for tat for um, the U.S. Um, seizing similar assets and similar Iranian assets um, a year ago. Um, in Judea and Samaria, we've seen the continuation of uh, the anti-terror operations by the IDF forces with uh, dozens of terrorists being arrested last night as well. Um, we've now seen over 2,600 terrorists arrested in Judea and Samaria since the start of uh, uh, the massacre and since the start of the war. Um, those are, to those who follow, really unprecedented numbers. Um, that's often what we saw in, 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 in whole years. Um, there weren't so many people arrested, so really we're seeing a, a substantial activity. The big subject, obviously, of the day um, was the hearing this morning and the start of the hearing in the International Court of Justice on South Africa's claim against Israel that it is committing a genocide, nonetheless, um, in uh, uh, and nothing less than that, in the Gaza Strip. And today uh, we're joined by, by uh, firstly, my co-host, um, Ambassador Alan Baker, um, a fellow of the of the JCPA, a head of a center in the JCPA, previously um, the legal advisor for Israel's foreign ministry and an ambassador of Israel uh, to Canada on the one hand. And on the other hand, we're joined by Professor Benjamin Fox, um, who is a a medical doctor by profession, a pulmonologist, a leading pulmonologist in Israel, 
Um, but it, but wrote a very interesting article, did a very interesting study, and then uh, thereafter an article on the on 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 the characteristics of the deaths in Gaza as a result of Israel's wars. Um, I'll let uh, uh, um, Professor Fox a little bit expound on that because really the two subjects are connected one into the other. What uh, uh, Professor Fox was dealing with was the question of indiscriminate Israel's indiscriminate bombing, so it's alleged in the Gaza Strip. And the findings of Dr. Fox that, well, it appears that those killed are of a, or predominantly of a certain age group. That certain age group appears to be males within the fighting age. Um, and it appears that the other people being killed are, uh, um, are, 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 are obviously, Israel is, is, is devastated when any innocent person is killed. Um, but it, it appears that the, that the libel that's being told about Israel indiscriminately bombing um, isn't uh, exactly bared out by any of the facts. Um, so uh, um, that's uh, really what we're going to be discussing um, this afternoon. So uh, um, Professor Fox, um, please give us like a background into the studies that you did. Um, what's also interesting uh, uh, about the study uh, uh, that Professor Fox conducted is who was and who wasn't willing um, to publish his findings. Um, so, so maybe you can uh, talk about that as well. I'll give that maybe opening, a, 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 um, a, a, and and then you can take it from there, please. Sure. Well, hi, uh, uh, Maurice, and it's uh, great <coughs> to see you again after so many years uh, since we were at school together. And uh, just wanted to thank you for uh, welcoming me into your webinar. Um, this is a, a result of some work that I did with two of my esteemed colleagues from uh, Canada from uh, McGill, Professor Sammy Swisser and Professor David Langleben. And we basically wanted to look at this idea that is Israel, you know, indiscriminately killing uh, people. Now, of course, we're doctors. We, we don't have access to IDF data. We don't really have any uh, handle on it until um, on the 27th of October, so about three weeks into the fighting, the Gaza Ministry of Health um, uh, published a, a, a big PDF document giving the, the names and sex and age uh, of all the people that according to them, so I, I'm presuming that the Gaza Ministry of Health is probably controlled by Hamas. So this is basically Hamas data um, and so we were able to extract that data and compare it to data that we knew about the population of Hamas, uh, of, pardon me, from Gaza, uh, published from census data, such as it exists. So I don't know if uh, we could maybe take a look at this first slide. Can we get that up on the screen? So here on the left, uh, Maurice, uh, what we're seeing is the census data, which we just obtained from an internet source. And you can see this is called a population pyramid. It's not hard to understand it. Uh, uh, on the, so we're looking at the left side now. We've got males in blue and females in yellow. And you can see, starting from the bottom, uh, babies, and then getting to the top, older people. And on each side, you can see uh, the distribution of uh, the population in Gaza, and that was in 2016. So if you add up all these numbers, you get to 1.88 million people uh, in that census. And that was basically, uh, you can see the sort of very typical uh, pyramid, uh, triangular shape that's very typical for a developing nation where you've got a lot of children and not many old people. Now, on the right side of the slide, uh, what you can see are, is the distribution of the casualties. And again, I have no way of knowing whether this is true or not true data, whether people have been left out, whether people have been put in. This is basically data published by the Gaza Ministry of Health. And even just eyeballing <clears throat> these numbers uh, on the right, you can see there's a sort of a blue bulge that starts around maybe even in the 10 to 15 bracket, but certainly the males in blue uh, seem to have a bulge. Now, this is a little bit hard to understand. So let's 
let's go to the next slide if we can. And in this slide, what you're seeing here on the, on the horizontal axis are, are we grouped into three sets of age groups. So we've got zero to 19, which we'll call children, even though we know that, uh, you know, probably from a reasonably young age, even children could participate in hostilities or could be used in hostilities. We've got 20 to 39, which we call the combatant age, and we've got over 40s. And again, we know that over 40s can also be involved if they choose. And then we've got this red horizontal line, which is basically just the number of deaths in this Gaza document divided by the population of Gaza and then multiplied by 100,000. So this is just a way of normalizing across all of these different groups that are all different sizes. And what you can see very clearly, I think, and we've used very creatively used blue for males and pinks for females. And um, you can see very clearly that in the combatant age, that there's a, the blue blocks are very, very significantly above this line. Now, without getting into, and this is basic math, so there's nothing special here. If you get into the more analytical epidemiological techniques, you can basically calculate that the chances of this happening randomly are less than one in 10,000. So this this is not accidental, and in fact, there's there's it's very you know I, I like I look at the media and I look at Twitter, and it's always going on and on about you know indiscriminate killing of children. But actually, if you look here on this on the left group of zero to nineteen year olds, you actually see that they are significantly lower than the the uh, the average line. So what this actually shows. Uh, Purely speaking, epidemiological, irrespective of my Zionism and my, uh, you know, love for Israel, uh, what this shows very clearly is that this is not indiscriminate killing. It's not. There's there's just no way that scientifically you could say this. Now, if if you send a paper like this with, let's say, you know, smoking and, and heart disease or smoking and lung cancer. And you said, oh, there, you know, there's no link, you'd be you'd be laughed at. So we try to actually publish this finding uh, in some uh, medical journals, the same medical journals that have been recently publishing uh, sort of polemic articles, uh, blaming Israel for all of this usual, you know, indiscriminate killing and blah, blah, they wouldn't touch it. So in the end, we we decided to publish it just in a, a, a Jewish news uh, website, just so that the data would be out there. And I, I think the data are compelling, and I think that the 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 court should look at things like this. Obviously, this is old data now. We've got another two months of data, but I think that this is this is in epidemiological terms a slam dunk to show that there is no indiscriminate killing by uh, Israel in Gaza based on the Hamas's own data. That's the key here. It's not something that we found and we screened and we adjudicated. We just took exactly as is, extracted this data from the PDF that uh, the Hamas published. So I hope that that's uh, uh, an acceptable explanation. And if there are any questions you want to ask or any comments, uh, I'd be happy to try and answer. So what's amazing that, that, that I should just uh, explain to our audience uh, 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 Professor Fox, is that the same document that, that that Professor Fox used as his basis for the analysis that that, that he that he that he did um, includes a very rudimentary graph showing the dates of people being killed as and, and numbers being killed. On that same graph, there is an unexplained, really an unexplained, very uh, uh, um, serious peak in the numbers, specifically on the seventeenth of October. Now. For most people, that doesn't really mean anything. Was the IDF acting or operating on a, on a much wider level, on a much a, a, a more intensive level? And the answer is no. What happened on the 17th of October? Well, that's the night that Israel, based on the 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 the, the really the the baseless uh, 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 allegation, attacked the El Hahali Hospital um, and caused the death of 500 people. Now we know that. In hindsight, it wasn't Israel that attacked the hospital, but rather it was an errant rocket of 
Palestinian Islamic Jihad. We know no. that there weren't 500 people killed, but there were only, uh, uh, only. Uh, obviously, every death is, is unfortunate, but the number of deaths was considerably less, no more probably than 20 people. And yet, the graph that's presented is clearly tailored to show that on the 17th of October, Israel killed an excessive amount of people. So that's uh, um, the first point. The second point that's important uh, um, to know about the uh, um, this very detailed information that Hamas uh, uh, ostensibly put out, and there I have to just maybe tweak a little bit what you said. There is no question that the, the, the Ministry of Health in Gaza is Hamas. It's run by Hamas. It's dominated by Hamas. It, it, it is Hamas. Uh, um, uh, it's, uh, the, 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 they are one in the same. Um, it's not I, even... I'm sure you're right, Maurice. I, I'm just, you know, I'm trying to be... Cautious. As objective as possible, so as to not give the impression that our analysis was biased. It but is, Dr. I, it I, is I, literally... I Dr. Think you're correct. It is literally Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, in this case, as, uh, for, for the Ministry of, uh, of, of, of Health. Um, but they are one in the same. The other uh, uh, conspicuously missing element in that document is any dates. There's no dates as to when these people died. Um, unfortunately, as we know, Israel is still trying to piece together um, a, 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 a final list of those people killed on, uh, uh, in the massacre on October 7th. It, we're still in a little bit, a bit of a foggy stage because we know that some people were kidnapped. We don't know exactly how many. We know that there were people who were burned to death, and all that's left of them sometimes is 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 teeth. And sometimes we haven't even found those teeth. So, and and yet in comparison, Hamas was able to uh, um, really provide a, a, a very substantial list of thousands of people. Um, uh, uh, very uh, uh, impressively. And so, and so that brings us immediately into, and it's really interconnected, as I mentioned before, this discussion on on on, on what happened this morning in, in the ICJ. Um, really there we saw both the South African claim, um, uh, written claim, and then again in the arguments uh, presented today, adopting that same idea. Well, Israel is committing this genocide. It's, it, it's indiscriminately killing everybody, men, women, children, um, as they uh, uh, graphically described, there's uh, um, women dying every two hours and babies and 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 really very uh, 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 graphic uh, uh, descriptions of what they claim is going on. Much of it lacking any type of factual basis, because their factual basis is the same Ministry of Health in Gaza and uh, uh, um, and uh, uh, which we know is, is is Hamas. So putting those two things together, maybe Ambassador Baker, you could. Uh, Weigh in here and give us just an update on uh, a, a, a more formal update on on what happened this morning in that hearing um, and 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 what the arguments, if there were new arguments that came up uh, um, that, that that you identified there, as opposed to what had been uh, already claimed in uh, the written argument. Okay. Well, can you hear me? Yes, we can, sir. Okay. Well, first of all, Professor Fox, uh, uh, I think your findings are, are extremely important. Um, not merely in the context of the present uh, case in the International Court of Justice, but, but more so in response to the, the claims that Israel is committing, has been committing war crimes by indiscriminately committing, uh, uh, killing uh, Palestinians. Um, and uh, this is a very serious uh, uh, violation of the laws of the uh, armed conflict. And your findings are essential in order to counter uh, uh, that claim in any circumstances, whether it's before this particular court in light of these yeah. particular accusations or any any future other uh, accusations, whether it's before the International Criminal Court or any other uh, uh, tribunal. So well, this, I, first of all... If I could just interject, uh, we actually also have... Uh, we, we actually tried this before. It's not the first time we had this idea. We have actually data from uh, Tsuketan, where we... Operation Protective we, Edge in 2014. Yeah, 2014. And it's even more extreme, uh, the, 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 the bulge of males between 20 and 39. But again, medical journals won't touch it. So we, we have that data too. Yes, I... I, I well, yeah. 
Well, look, all this information is vital, and it, it when when needed, it will be necessary and it will be very useful because there are there are several uh, processes going on against uh, uh, Israeli uh, um, political leaders and and military commanders. Um, several accusations and and uh, as much uh, solid statistics and evidence that that we can uh, garner. It, it's vitally important. It will be vitally important if and when the time comes that we choose to 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 defend ourselves openly. But with respect to what's going on today, um, you know, it's it's very ironic that, that this whole uh, thing because the genocide convention was was drafted in um, between 1948 and 1940, 1945 and 1948 uh, as a, a response to the Holocaust. And in fact, the word genocide was was coined by Raphael Lemkin, a Polish Jew. Lemkin in um, 1944 to describe what the, the Nazis did to the Jews during the Holocaust. So it's very ironic that, that uh, um, South Africa and the Palestinians, and I understand that the Palestinians are behind uh, uh, this, this uh, case by South Africa, it's very ironic that they're inverting the whole thing and turning it against against Israel. Um, the the um, convention uh, criminalizing um, genocide um, is very specific in that it requires, as a definition of genocide, the intent to commit genocide. Now, if there's no, if if they can't prove that there's a specific and solid intent to commit genocide, then uh, uh, their the, the case falls. And if what Israel is doing is fighting in self-defense. Uh, against ter terror uh, and, uh, and it doesn't constitute um, a, a, an attempt or an intention to wipe out a whole racial group or national group uh, or religious group, then the case falls or theoretically it should fall. And by the same token, the, 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 the issue that's being dealt with today and tomorrow, uh, the request for provisional measures the whole aim of provisional measures is to prevent the, the country that's engaging in genocide uh, carrying out any act contributing to the crime of genocide. Now, since we're, we're completely rejecting the, the, the concept that, that, that Israel has been involved in genocide, then the request for provisional measures also should fall because it's got nothing. To, what Israel is doing has got nothing to do with the genocide. Israel is defending itself in accordance with the rules of international law, including the rules regarding indiscriminate uh, 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 killing. And therefore, if the, the, the judges of the court, the, the, the 15 plus uh, South African and Israeli judge, if they genuinely and impartially, as they're sweared to do, uh, impartially examine the case, then they can't decide otherwise than than to collect than to say that um the the south african case has got no basis and and therefore uh, uh, cannot be entertained that's something uh, uh, for on that note uh, um, ambassador uh, uh, baker uh, for those for those people who watched the hearing this morning i think it was very clear that there was nothing new or interesting that was presented uh, uh, by south africa they talked a lot about really about the, the, the jurisdiction and that ability to give these uh, and 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 the, really the the South African minister at the end gave a list really uh, a, a very long list of demands that South Africa placed on the court to issue orders against Israel. Basically, the the their goal is to uh, uh, ensure that Hamas survives another day so that they can continue carrying out uh, um, October seven. Uh, massacres as they've already committed themselves to doing and uh, Israel be really have it both its hands tied behind its back and both its legs uh, uh, tied together really hogtied entirely into not being able to defend itself or its citizens against uh, those orders is that the type of order that you think would be issued by the court I, I'm very doubtful that the court will 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 order any type of uh, provisional measures because as i said in my view that there's no um that they the south africans can't establish the fact that there's a, a solid intention by israel uh, to commit genocide despite 
stupid uh, statements by by irresponsible and and, and uh, ignorant uh, uh, people, including uh, some senior politicians. Uh, but th- but these don't are not indicative of any specific intent to commit genocide. There are there facts that that, that uh, uh, the South Africans and the Palestinians have put together to fill in their case, including a a pop song by by one of the pop singers. Uh, but but these. And yeah, any serious judge doesn't exist. Any serious judge can't really uh, take these as as solid evidence that a particular state is, is uh, carrying out uh, uh, genocide. Now, look, the, the, Israel has committed itself in having become party to the genocide convention um, to to give the court jurisdiction to deal with any claim. Um, of violation of, of the convention and the charter of the United Nations when it refers to the um, International Court of Justice specifically says that, that the findings of the, the court and, and uh, orders given by the court are binding upon states but this is all very serious and therefore I think that if the judges are acting seriously which, which which there's no guarantee that this will happen but if they're acting seriously then by any legal logic they shouldn't be able to determine neither either that there's a um, genocide going on or the need to um, order um, provisional measures in order to prevent further actions towards uh, fulfilling the intention to commit genocide. So really, we have here a case of 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 also the information that both information that was presented by. By Dr. Fox, really, as as he uh, by Professor Fox, as he explained, it's not really something which is specific only to uh, this conflict, but rather that information was gathered also about Operation uh, Protective Edge in 2014, and they're really those two subjects, the ICJ and the ICC, the International Criminal Court, meet. Um, uh, how much of the of, of this? Why do why do they meet? Because in the in the criminal court, there also the, an, an investigation has been opened. Um, the, there were claims also at the time in 2014 that Israel was committing uh, indiscriminate killings. And uh, um, and and really, the, the prosecutor there, Ben Suda, decided, the previous prosecutor decided to open an investigation against Israel, which seems to be ongoing uh, 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 to a certain extent. But never was there the claim that Israel had uh, really con- conducted this wide-scale uh, um, indiscriminate bombing. To who... To, to really put these people on the spot, uh, uh, Professor Fox, who are the uh, uh, medical journals that, that did entertain these false and libelous claims against uh, Israel, but then weren't willing to, 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 to publish any type of rebuttal, any type of uh, uh, um, contrary information that, that, the, that the readers might be able to, to get something out of? Yeah, so uh, it's a good question. So... Um... In 2014, it was The Lancet that uh, published uh, basically a a blood libel. Um, And in this conflict at the beginning, um, there was a really dreadful article written by uh, some epidemiologist at UCL in London. uh, And that was published in the BMJ Public Health Journal. So we're actually talking... uh, about two premier medical journals that are based in uh, the UK. Shamefully for us, uh, as uh, as people who were born in the UK and then made Aliyah. Uh, when we try to publish just now, we try to publish in Lancet journals. So there's one called Lancet Public Health and one that's just called The Lancet. Uh, they wouldn't touch it. And uh, at that point, you know, since there was a certain uh time pressure to publish uh these data you know before it can take a while to publish sci- uh, scientific articles that's just a fact of of life in academia um and uh, so we decided we would just publish it in a non-medical uh place um, in the website called the jewish journal so so just for for those people who, who are looking um to find that article it's called indiscriminate killings in Gaza. The facts suggest otherwise, similar to um, the uh, title of today's uh, um, uh, broadcast and briefing. Um, 
So that's where you can find the article, um, just as in, in response to, to questions that we had. I will also try and uh, um, post it as part of a chat, if that is at, at all possible. Um, and and so you everyone will be able to have, have access to that. Um, going back to uh, you, if I may, uh, uh, Ambassador uh, Baker, how do we now most effectively use the information that and the analysis of of Dr. Fox. We know that it's a, of Professor Fox. We know that it's important. We know that it exposes this alternative reality. But in in the hearings before the ICJ, um, there seems to be very little uh, um, willingness, really, to uh, um, to 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 take those things into account. Um, and 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 to what extent, really, is uh, um, the decision there based on real facts that are presented, as opposed to really national alliances. Just to give you an idea of the makeup of the court, there's a judge from Morocco, Somalia, Uganda, Lebanon, uh, um, Brazil, Japan, Jamaica, China, uh, Germany, India, France, Slovakia, Australia, um, the president of the court being from uh, the United States, and uh, the vice president being from Russia, um, one of the really other people who are being uh, uh, brought before the court for that, uh, um, uh, uh, for the war between Russia and the Ukraine. So, 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 Ambassador Baker, how do we get this information publicly before uh, um, the court? And to what extent does the court do, do its own research? Or is it a court that really works only on the basis of, well, South Africa claimed X, Israel presented Y, and that's the extent of um, the legal presentations? Well, no, it's going to be a very complex and long process. Um, not talking about what's going to happen today and tomorrow or the next couple of weeks where the court will decide whether to um, order provisional measures or not. Um, the, the, the process could well take uh, uh, two or three years in which each party will present uh, its evidence and uh, the other party will, will present uh, evidence to counter what uh, uh, the ac accusing party will present. So the the, um, the 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 data that Professor Fox has uh, has published will be extremely important. I would say even vital during that stage, uh, the micro stage, as apart from the macro stage, when when we go down to the nitty gritty and and respond to every accusation that's made. If if indeed it would it will be necessary, and I personally still. Have doubts whether it'll be necessary. The you know the, the fifteen judges okay. The the ICJ is composed of judges from every geographical region of the United Nations, uh, which by the way is, is quite ironic because Israel is not a member of any of the uh, uh, re regional groupings, and therefore uh, we we would never have the option or the opportunity to have a, a, an Israeli judge elected. To the court, which is shameful, what, what, and it's a violation of the what UN. What does that Charter. mean, Ambassador Baker? Are we ex-territory, or the Jews persona non grata in the court? It's anti-Semitism in the UN. In other words, the, the the first article of the UN Charter talks about sovereign equality of all members of the UN. But the one state that's not a, 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 a not able to put up any candidate for the court is Israel. Because we're not we're not a member of any of the geographical uh, regional groupings, so um, you know that that's just by the way. Um, but what I'm saying, I know it's it's incredible, but th this has been something that Israel has been trying to deal with every year at the General Assembly, where there's a committee on the Charter uh, to deal with um, uh, attempts to amend the Charter. And so Israel this country has frequently... that doesn't exist is now trying to get justice in the court. Well, yes. Would that yes. be an accurate description? Well, we, you know, we exist because we're a party to the statute and we're a party to the charter, but we're still we're still discriminated against. But that's a much wider issue, uh, much wider than the present issue. The present issue, what I wanted to say was that, you know, the, the court is not necessarily the Security Council, which is a, 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 a an organ which is based on politics, uh, as is the General Assembly, which is a much larger organ, 190, 193 States members. The court is not supposed to be a political body, despite the fact that the judges are appointed uh, by their states. And, you know, one may presume that each state 
that's appointed a judge um, tries to to influence the the opinion uh, of of their particular judge in the direction that uh, their their own political policies go. But but theoretically, uh, each judge is, is appointed on the basis of his or her being a a, a brilliant, uh, honourable. Uh, uh, lawyer, uh, uh, and uh, they're sworn to, to act impartially in uh, considering every case. Whether this will happen or not, I don't know. I have my doubts. I was actually uh, uh, reading this morning, for, for, for those that, that, that wish you can find uh, 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 the makeup of, of, of the court, it's, it's, it's online, um, and I was reading some of the, uh, um, the CVs of, um, of the... Uh, um, of the, the the members of the court, and and it really does appear that they are uh, um, really substantial uh, um, legal minds um, that have been appointed to the court, and one would hope that they would be um, independent. But uh, again, when you're talking about a, a adjudicating a country uh, um, that doesn't exist, and and with judges who come from countries that are uh, some of them are at a state of war with Israel, if you have a, a, a countries like Lebanon where where, as I described yeah. at, the, at the beginning of the program, the war with Lebanon, with Hezbollah, is, is ongoing to this day. So what really chance do we have with a, 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 a Lebanese judge? And that really brings me to my, my other question. To what extent, we know that in, in, in regular uh, um, legal proceedings, you can possibly ask for judges to recuse themselves because of even the hint of bias. Is that something that exists in this court? Well, we tried to do that uh, uh, in 2004 when the um, the International Court of Justice was, was given a, a, a request for an advisory opinion on Israel's security fence. And uh, the, the uh, Egyptian, um, Egyptian representative in the, in the Security Council, uh, uh, when, when this request was made, uh, later be, was appointed to uh, as a judge in the International Court of Justice. And he was sitting uh, in this particular case that he had initiated uh, before he became a, a judge. And we tried to get him uh, recused, but of course uh, uh, it, it didn't happen. But what I wanted to say was, look, the International Court of Justice in The Hague is a UN organ. It's part of the UN. Unlike, by the way, the International Criminal Court, which is a completely independent body. The, U, the, the International Court of Justice is one of the major organs of the UN. And so, uh, you know, that more or less dictates uh, what would probably come out of it um, because that's the nature of the UN. So uh, whilst on the one hand, perhaps naively, I'd like to think that um, the 50 or the 17 justices sitting there, all of whom, as you say, are honourable, respectable uh, uh, senior lawyers from their states would deal with the, the the substantive issues and the merits and not bring in political viewpoints. But this is something that uh, perhaps I'm overly naive to think about that. That's something uh, uh, which we'll have to see. Back to you, uh, uh, Professor Fox. To, to what extent do you believe that that and I know that you addressed it before, but in the study that you that, that you uh, presented, um, how can we identify and really uh, um, really uh, um, present these as unique uh, um, information and statistics for this conflict? Has there been any study that you know of or, or that you saw or that you've been involved in even? Um, that would compare the statistics to other places, um, to other conflict zones. Uh, a, a while ago, a few months ago, I wrote a, a, an article for the, the, the Jerusalem Center for, for, for Public Affairs um, uh, doing a comparison of the number of casualties in different uh, um, armed uh, uh, anti-terror conflicts around the world. And it really did show that there was no difference between um, Israel's uh, operations in, in, in Gaza um, as opposed to operations anywhere else in the world, have you seen other studies similar to those that you have uh, that, that that you presented that really did that comparison? Uh, actually, uh, uh, that's not something that I've personally been uh, looking at. 
uh, the you know I'm as you said I'm actually a lung doctor, and uh, this this uh, you know I I uh, I enjoy epidemiological research as part of that, and I have these uh, colleagues that I work with, but I haven't really been personally studying the epidemiology of conflict, although as a consumer of of this kind of uh, work, I have seen data presented that that shows that uh, there are all sorts of um, combatant to civilian ratios published, and I, I've seen articles written that that the ratio is very uh, low in Israel. You know that, that I mean it, it's pretty gruesome actually to to talk about oh you know ratio of civilians to combatants killed, but in fact Israel. The data that I've seen just generally published uh, on the internet uh, is actually very favorable uh, to Israel compared to uh, other, we'll call it uh, developed democratic nations fighting uh, similar terrorist insurgencies. I think the very favorable comparison to data came coming out of Iraq. But I, I wouldn't like to 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 set myself up as an expert on that. I, I consume that information rather than produce it. This is rather specific to, to this case. I mean, I can tell our audience from from the research that that, that I wrote uh, again a few months ago that in Iraq, in the first six years of the war, 2004 through 2009, um, there were over 109,000 deaths um, directly related to the conflict. Of whom over sixty six thousand. This is based on uh, uh, based on American uh, uh, intelligence documents that that, that were leaked. Um, over sixty six thousand were civilians, um, and obviously no one was making the claim then that uh, that uh, uh, the United States and the Allies in in that war were uh, conducting or carrying out either indiscriminate bombing or uh, um, and certainly not genocide. It would appear that this is a claim that is specifically saved. Uh, um, for Israel. Um, well, if there's one thing I could maybe add, just for for what I the, the work that we did do, uh, and I think we wrote it in the uh, in the article, is that the data that we analysed was, again, it it came from the Gaza Ministry of Health, and I'm absolutely, I mean, you know, I, we can all speculate how reliable that is, but I'm absolutely certain that that data that that document that, that we took the data from did not include any of the uh, Gazan terrorists or civilian participants, or whatever you want to call them, that uh, were killed inside Israel in the first few days of the conflict. I mean, they're definitely not in there. That, I, that I'm certain of. And that, 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 would, that would massively uh, skew the, the data uh, towards, again, you know, huge, huge skew would be would exist if they were involved as well. Uh, but again, we 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 don't know. We we just basically took it at face value, and even their face value data, it's it's clear that there's no indiscriminate killing. So you know, I don't what's, have to see how we could be better than that. What's un, what's unfortunately uh, sad to see is that the, the same data that was used and 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 so carefully analysed by Professor Fox was immediately adopted by. The New York Times and other uh, um, ostensibly reputable uh, um, news outlets that that then said, "Well, this is we've been presented with the proof of um, the killings uh, um, that Israel has allegedly uh, yeah. um, carried out in the Gaza Strip," and and really there was no critical analysis of that of the age groups of what it actually does look like, what it should look like, um, or of really an analysis of um, the ages of the people killed. We know that uh, um, in addition to uh, um, Professor Fox's uh, study, you can also find a similar study that was con uh, 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 that was conducted by um, another JCPA uh, uh, fellow, uh, uh, Lenny Ben David, who also uh, um, has analysed the statistics of both uh, pr a Protective Edge and again of the statistics that have been coming out, not the entire list as as Professor Fox did, um, but really the, the the conclusions when you look at these things from either side appear to be very clear. Um, Ambassador uh, uh, Baker, maybe you could uh, leave us on a positive note of something to, uh, th th that you think that could positively come out of this discussion in the ICJ, if there is anything uh, 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 of, of, of that nature. 
Yes, sir. Sure. Look, the two two points. First of all, um, this is a platform, a, a huge platform, uh, an international platform, uh, upon which Israel has basically been invited to present its case. Uh, and uh, it's probably an opportunity, uh, a, a better opportunity than we've had up to now, in light of the the, the, the massive anti-Israel uh, media uh, and, and reporting that's been going on. Uh, it's a, it's a, a huge platform, a stage in which to enable Israel to present its case, and and um, and therefore I think that this is possibly the one positive thing that might well come out of this. Uh, that uh, the world will watch as we present our case. And this will include, as I understand, um, the, 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 the horror film uh, um, of the uh, act, act, actions carried out, the atrocities carried out by the Hamas people on the 7th of October. But if we're talking about indiscriminate killing, I think perhaps the, the perfect example of indiscriminate targeting is Hamas. Uh, firing 60,000, 70,000 rockets indiscriminately into Israel's population centers. Uh, and so, you know, if, if we're talking about indiscriminate killing, then I would expect that uh, part of Israel's case to be presented will be a, a detailed um, uh, uh, listing of the extent of the indiscriminate uh, um, uh, firing and illegal firing carried out by Hamas uh, against Israel's population centers. That's uh, that's definitely. I think that if uh, uh, if your uh, um, analysis is correct, and that tomorrow, as part of the hearing, Israel will uh, um, will screen that forty-seven minute uh, um, show of horrors, then really on this international platform um, being broadcast all around the world, um, that could be something uh, um, very, very, very substantial. Um, Professor Fox, apart from telling people not to smoke, which is a given, um, don't smoke, whoever's watching, give up smoking. It's not smoke. Some, something positive that, that you think can come out of uh, um, your analysis. Well, I mean, I, I would modestly hope that our analysis uh, could be helpful to uh, the defense of the state of Israel. Uh, and I, you know, as a as a physician and as a scientist, I'm horrified by the perversion and inversion of science uh, uh, to be used for politics. Uh, I think science should be objective and science should help us inform, help politicians and leaders uh, to make the right decisions. And, and we, should, we should not be in a situation where science and scientists are 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 uh, are basically lying for for politics because I think that's that's basically the against the whole point of of uh, of uh, science and, and medicine. So if I my hope would be first of all that that the justices will just throw out the case uh, tomorrow afternoon. I'm guessing they won't. Um, uh, and if they have to earn their salary, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have to make sure they don't get beheaded when they go home. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm sitting here trying not to like, uh, to, 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 to say what I really feel about all of that because I'm, I want this all to be professional and and uh, polite. But uh, I hope that if our data could be uh, uh, helpful in in mounting a, a good defense of, of of our position, then. I'll be that'll be the best paper that got rejected ever as far as so I'm what concerned. What I can say on that positive note is that from the moment um, that Professor Fox uh, contacted me and uh, uh, and and I and I read there and saw the information, I did my utmost to to send it and to forward it on um yeah. to members of Israel's uh, Ministry of Justice to make sure that it got into the right hands of okay. uh, um, of the people defending uh, um, the state of Israel. And, and really the Jewish people, because this isn't only a libel against the Jewish state, but it's really against the entire Jewish people. Absolutely. And we hope that that, that will be um, um, useful to them and uh, they will be able to uh, um, make the, uh, the really their best attempts to present it to the court. Um, gentlemen, thank you. Unfortunately, our time has run out. Um, and, uh, uh, and, and so I need to say goodbye. Thank you both for 
you're, you're, you're uh, you really so tremendous, your tremendous uh, uh, in, input. Um, uh, to 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 Mr. Zoroff, uh, um, I will say that we're not going to address the the ins and outs of specifically uh, um, the the Srebrenica uh, uh, massacre. Um, th that that's a complicated case within and of itself, and and requires just one of the questions that we came up uh, um, uh, um, during during the during the session. So that really requires very in depth legal analysis um, as to what is considered part of the crime of genocide. Um, what happens if you uh, allow some people to to run away? If you don't allow them to run away, um, that's a, a, an entire subject in and of itself. But so for now, I will wish everyone. For those who don't know, today is uh, is is the is the start of the new month of Shvat uh, um, in the Hebrew calendar. So have a good month, everyone. Have a good weekend, everyone. Shabbat shalom, and we will see you again on Sunday at four o'clock Israel time. Until then, keep safe, everyone. Um, and uh, 